The Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 16 to 17, in English and in Indonesian. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Karena begitu besar kasih Allah akan dunia ini, sehingga ia telah mengaruniakan anaknya yang tunggal, supaya setiap orang yang percaya kepadanya tidak binasa, melainkan beroleh hidup yang kekal. Sebab Allah mengutus anaknya ke dalam dunia, bukan untuk menghakimi dunia, melainkan untuk menyelamatkannya oleh dia. Amin. Reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, from verse 14. This is God's word. Now it was the day of the preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered them over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on other either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. few verses later in verse 28 after this Jesus knowing that all was now finished said to fulfill the scripture I first a jar full of sour wine stood there so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth verse 13 when Jesus had finished the sour wine he said it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Amen.
Let's pray. God, our Father, we give you thanks. We worship you because of Jesus Christ. Today, we especially remember his betrayal, his rejection, his crucifixion on the cross. Lord, the reason why we are able to worship you, the reason why we are able to have our sins forgiven, is because of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask that you would be working in our hearts this Easter. Help us to have a newfound love for the cross. Lord, help us to grow in our faith and our joy in Jesus Christ, because he is the reason why we can have great hope in this life. It is because you love us. You love us so much that you gave your one and only son so, Father, we commit our Easter to you, even though we are unable to gather as your people together physically. We pray that your spirit will be working at your church for your glory's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're going to be thinking about John chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. For God so loved. You know, Easter is an important time of the year for Christians. And for the whole world, it is important not because of the long weekend holiday. It is important not because we can buy cheap chocolate eggs and bunnies and eat it all up. It's an important time of the year because of what Easter is all about. It is about the life, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And even though we are unable to meet together because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the purpose of Easter and the message that it shares does not change. In fact, in a time when there is a lot of despair, the message of Easter is what we need. We need to be reminded of God's great love for humanity, God's great love for the world. We need to be reminded that he loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die for them. And there is great hope. There is great hope for those who repent and believe in the name of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Great, famous Bible verses. This Easter, I want to encourage you to meditate on the greatness of Easter. I want to remind you of the foundation of Easter, God's great love and your response to God's great love. And so I have two points for today. The first point is the foundation of Easter, God's great love in verse 16, the first half of verse 16, and then the response to Easter, repent and believe. That's the second half. The foundation of Easter, God's great love, and the response to Easter, repent and believe. Let's think a bit more about verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God's great love. You know, this famous text teaches us that God really does love us. His love for us is so great. It's love which is unfathomable, incomprehensible. It's a great love which is demonstrated in salvation. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus a few verses earlier. And in verse 15, he has told him that whoever believes in him, the Son of Man, may have eternal life. That's John chapter 3, verse 15. And so when we get to verse 16 and 17, Jesus is talk still talking to Nicodemus, and he's talking about eternal life, salvation. And Jesus continues to go into details of the motive, the extent, and the way of salvation. 
If you look at the beginning of verse 16, you see that eternal life, salvation, is driven by God's unfathomable love, His great and mighty love. The motive for Easter is God's great love. The reason we have Good Friday is because God so loved the world. Because God so loved, eternal life is possible. That's the motive. That is the reason. The reason behind the giving and the sending of Jesus Christ is the love of God. Love. That's amazing. It wasn't because Jesus and God was lonely. It wasn't because we deserved it as human beings. It was because of God's great love. And that love is stressed by what he does, right? Look at the middle of verse 16. For God so loved that he gave his one and only son. God's great love is demonstrated by the fact that he gave his one and only son. You know that God so loves the world because he gave us Jesus. He gave us Easter. He gave us Good Friday. He gave us Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, a long Easter weekend. We have the saying, action speaks louder than words. Words mean nothing if it isn't followed by action. I'm sure you have seen people in your life who have made promises and who have said all sorts of different things and they never keep it. They never back it up with actions. And the question you ask is, are they genuine? Are they, true, are they truthful people? Are they honest people? People can speak highly about a cause. They can keep a promise. But if they never support the cause, if they never keep the promise, you can question whether they really mean it. I remember once I was walking to the train station to go into the city and I was stopped by one of those charity workers. In this particular case, I had a few minutes to spare, and so I spent some time talking to them. They were raising funds for an animal charity. I didn't have my wallet on me, I just had my Mikey, so I told them I wouldn't be able to support them at this moment. The person uh, who I was talking to was desperate for funds, and so they told me that I should call my bank and get the bank to do a direct deposit to them. Now, to me, that sounds like a lot of work to do on the spot. I remember apologizing, saying that I wouldn't be able to do that. And then I asked him whether he had given financially to the cause he was trying to sell. He said to me, honestly, that he hadn't. He hadn't given financially to this animal charity, the one that he was trying to sell to me. It speaks a lot about how important the cause is uh, for, to him. You know, actions speak louder than words. Similarly, when we look at the Bible and we think about the relationship between faith and works, in James chapter 2, verse 15 to 16, it says this. James chapter 2, verse 15 to 16, it says, If a brother or sister is poorly clothed, and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? Faith is demonstrated in works. It's backed up by works. And so in the same way, love is demonstrated by more than just words. A boy can say to his girlfriend that he loves her that he would want to spend the rest of his life with her but until he puts a ring on it his words don't really mean too much god demonstrates his love in an unfathomable way right in a great way a way which you couldn't imagine he demonstrates love in a way which we probably couldn't it is by sending his one and only son, to die for sinners. That's how he demonstrates his love. John writes elsewhere in 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. 
In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Love is seen by the fact that God not only took the initiative to come to this world to save sinners, but it is the fact that he came to be the propitiation for our sins. If you remember from last Sunday, because God is just, because God is holy, he must punish sin. He hates sin. He has righteous wrath, righteous anger. Propitiation, the big theological word, is when God has a change of attitude towards us because Jesus absorbs the wrath of God on our behalf. Instead of us being enemies of God, and instead of us taking the punishment, obviously the just punishment, on the cross, Jesus became the propitiation for our sins. The atoning sacrifice for our sins. The perfect Lamb of God who would wash away the sins of the world. Our judgment goes upon Him. And by faith in Jesus Christ, we can have a restored relationship with the Father. That's mind-blowing, right? That God would send His precious Son to do that for us. We can't imagine to do that. Can you imagine giving your life to your enemies? Or even more, giving up your children for your enemies? Unimaginable, unfathomable, great love. The richness of God's love, therefore, can only be seen, can only be appreciated if you realize that you don't deserve to be saved. It can only be fully appreciated when you recognize that you need a saviour. Because of your sins, God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ. He gave us Good Friday so that our sins can be forgiven. And that's the foundation for Easter, for Good Friday. God's great love. That's the first point. And the second and the final point is the response to Easter. Repent and believe, the second half of verse 16 to 17. Jesus doesn't only show us the motive and the foundation of Easter, so we can sit there, right, and do nothing about it. He shows us the way of salvation, the response to Easter. And so he doesn't tell us about this great love, about how great God is, so that we don't do anything about it. He tells us, this amazing truth so that we can respond to him. He shows us the way of salvation, the response to Easter. God's love is so great, right? It's great. He sent his one and only son. I want you to notice the extent of this love. It is for the world, sinful people, for God so loved the world. It's for the rebellious people. It is for people who rejected God and hate him. Now to clarify, some take this to mean that Jesus' death saves the whole world. Some people believe that this verse teaches that everyone is saved by the blood of Jesus. That is called universalism. But what Jesus is getting at is not the who is saved, but the extent of salvation, right? Jesus is not telling us who is saved, the world, but he's telling us the extent. The extent of salvation is to the world. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. He's a Jew, a Pharisee. He's the ruler of the Jews who believes that salvation belongs to the Jews only. God's chosen people. God's special chosen people. But what Jesus is getting at to Nicodemus and to us is that a special relationship with God the Father is not only for the Jews. It's for the whole world. Salvation is possible for the whole world. 
is for the Jews, the Romans, the Ethiopians, the Europeans, the Chinese, the Koreans, the Americans, the Indonesians, and even the Australians. And so in essence, the world here speaks of humanity. He didn't die just for the Jews, but he died for humanity. And the method, right, the method to be included in this salvation, how can you be included in this salvation? It is by believing in the one and only Son of God. It comes from believing. It comes from trusting. It comes from repenting and turning away from your sins and towards God. It is submitting to His Lordship. Verse 16, whoever believes will not perish, but have eternal life. There is only one way, and Jesus makes that clear. Jesus is clear that universalism isn't true. Salvation is conditional to repentance and belief. Although Jesus' death is sufficient for all, it is only effective for those who believe. Although Jesus' death is sufficient for all, it's sufficient for all, it is only effective for those who believe. Salvation is conditional to belief. In the context of John chapter 3, to believe is to be born again. Because the only way, right, the only way to see the kingdom of God, the only way to enter the kingdom of God is to be born again, to be born of the Spirit, to have God work in sinful hearts, a miracle. The person who can believe is the one who has been born again, is the one that God works in their hearts. Now you can look at Jesus' words negatively and say that if I don't believe in Jesus, I will perish. I'm not born of the Spirit. I can't believe. I'm not meant to believe. You could look at his words and think about it negatively. But I think what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to see God's great love. We're supposed to run back to the foundation of Easter. Because Jesus urges you to see that. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Jesus gives a positive statement. Yes, salvation is conditional to belief. Yes, although Jesus' death is sufficient for all, it's only effective for those who believe. Yes, what that looks like is that you need to be born again. You need God to work a miracle in your heart. But when you read this text, when you read John 3, 16 to 17, you ought to be shocked by his amazing love. You need to be shocked by God's great love for you. God loved the world so much. He gave his one and only son for you. He came to save, not condemn. And the question is, will you believe? Will you surrender and submit under the authority of God? Will you repent? Will you say no to sin and trust in Jesus Christ alone as the only way of salvation? The Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That is mankind's biggest problem. The only solution is in Jesus Christ. Salvation is here. Repent and believe Jesus Christ, God's own, one and only Son, died on the cross 2,000 years ago. He said it was finished. He took the punishment of sins on the cross. He purchased new life for believers. Repent and believe in Jesus Christ. This is the good news of the gospel. Mark chapter 10 verse 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be saved, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. How should you respond to Easter? Repent and believe. Easter is great. I love Easter. 
I'm one of those people who buys cheap chocolate to eat. But more importantly, Easter is great because it's a reminder that God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus Christ. He gave us this long weekend because he ultimately gave us his one and only son to die for sinful men. He shows us his great love by sending his son as a propitiation for our sins. He made salvation possible by repentance and belief in his name. If you have life in his name, if you are a Christian, rejoice this Easter, even in the midst of the coronavirus. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you haven't repented and believed in Jesus, you need to do that. The wages of sin is death. If you don't believe in Jesus, you will perish. But God made a way for you. He gave us Easter. He gave us Jesus. Give praise to God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful for your word. We're thankful for John 3, 16 to 17. Famous and beautiful words. Father, help us to be amazed by the love that you have shown us. Help us to be amazed by your unfathomable love. Help us to see that Jesus is the only way. Help us to repent and believe in him. Lord, we pray for those who don't know you yet. We pray that you'd be working in their hearts this Easter. Be working the hearts of our family and friends who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Have mercy upon them. Work your spirit in their hearts. And for us, Lord, who do believe, help us to grow in a deeper appreciation of who you are. Help us to give praise to you and to worship you because you're the reason we live, because you're the one who gives us hope eternal life in the future. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.